So I still have a long list of videos that I'm planning to produce and sometimes the difficult thing is deciding which one to do next. Quite often I will be guided by the comments on my channel in relation to certain topics and as a result of recent comments I decided to make this video. It's titled Flat Earth Can't Flight Plan and there's two aspects to that. The first one is that flat earthers themselves have not been able to produce an actual flight plan and secondly the actual flat earth model cannot produce accurate flight plans. So let's have a look at my challenge, which was posted back in December 2016. So it's now 14 months outstanding and not one flat earther has successfully completed this challenge. And the challenge was very simple. It was just to produce an actual flight plan from Sydney, Australia to Tahiti that will work in the real world. Now, I'm not asking anybody to do a challenge that I cannot do myself. I can produce a real flight plan from Sydney to Tahiti in less than 10 minutes. But 14 months later, all the greatest minds in flat earth have been unsuccessful in completing this challenge. There was only one genuine attempt, and I'm happy to say that was by an Australian. It was a genuine attempt. However, all he did was essentially reverse engineer the globe and the method that he used would not work in other areas on the globe and he realized that so it was a genuine attempt it was unsuccessful and this challenge to produce a real flight plan is still outstanding so for the next part of the demonstration we're going to look at three actual routes within australia all starting from melbourne the first one going from melbourne to darwin the second one going from Melbourne to Broome and the third one going from Melbourne to Perth. Now, they are progressively shorter distances. And in fact, if we look at the first one, Melbourne to Darwin, the Great Circle route is 1687 nautical miles. The flight plan is 1702 nautical miles. From Melbourne to Broome, Great Circle distance, 1676. So it's about 11 miles less and the flight plan distance is 1688 so it's shorter than the flight to darwin from melbourne to perth the great circle distance is 1461 so more than 200 nautical miles shorter than the previous routes and the flight plan distance is 1468 nautical miles so melbourne to darwin is the longest melbourne to broome is shorter and Melbourne to Perth is significantly shorter. We're going to have a look at those in my flight planning apps on Google Earth and then take a look at the actual real flight plans. So here are the flight plans in ForeFlight, which is my flight planning app. And you can see Melbourne to Darwin, which is the longest route, is 1687 nautical miles. Melbourne to Perth, the shortest, is 1461 these are the great circle distances and melbourne to brew is 1676 so the longest is melbourne to darwin then we have melbourne to brew then we have melbourne to perth looking at those distances on google earth we've got melbourne to darwin 1686 nautical miles Melbourne to Broome, 1676 nautical miles, so it's shorter. And then Melbourne to Perth, 1461, 60.89, that's closer to 1461. So again, the longest is Melbourne to Darwin. The next one is Melbourne to Broome, and the shortest is Melbourne to Perth. Let's take a look at the actual flight plans. Now this is an actual flight plan that I calculated this evening. And it goes from Melbourne to Darwin. It's in the aircraft I fly, so we're traveling at Mark 0.85. I have blanked out any personal company identifying information there, so that's what those black rectangles are. But what we're really interested in is just the distance of this flight plan from origin of Melbourne to destination of Darwin. The distance of the flight plan is 17. 0, 0.2 nautical miles. Now the reason it's slightly greater than the Great Circle track is that when we flight plan, 
we go via specific airways. Now they are very close to the Great Circle Route, but they're not the direct Great Circle Route in most cases when you're traveling over land. So we're going to see a few extra track miles, but the distance, the longest one, Melbourne to Darwin, 1702 nautical miles. The next one, Melbourne to Broome, there's Melbourne to Broome, origin Melbourne, destination Broome, distance 1688. So it's slightly less than Melbourne to Darwin. We then have a look at Melbourne to Perth. We have 1468 nautical miles. So origin Melbourne, destination Perth. And these are the ICAO codes, YMML and YPPH. They are the ICAO codes for those different airports and you can see them there again on that document. So once again, the flight planning app, Google Earth and actual aircraft flight plans. This is a real aircraft flight plan that I've calculated just this evening. All confirm that Melbourne to Darwin is the longest distance. Melbourne to Broome is slightly shorter and Melbourne to Perth is significantly shorter. So let's have a look now how this fails completely on the AE Gleason style map. So here's my large printed and mounted version of the AE map. And we're going to look at those routes on the AE map and compare the distances to what the real flight plans were showing us. Remember the first one from Melbourne up to Darwin on the real flight plan was the longest distance. Then the distance became shorter as we were going to Broome and it became significantly shorter as we went to Perth. Now on the AE map, that just does not work at all because we've got the shortest distance showing here is from Melbourne to Darwin. Then as we go to Broome, the distance is greater. And then as we go to Perth, the distance is greater still. So it's completely incorrect in terms of the respective distances between these three routes. On the real Earth, our real flight plans, Google Earth and the flight planning app, Melbourne to Darwin was the longest distance. Melbourne to Broome was slightly shorter and Melbourne to Perth was significantly shorter. So this AE map is clearly not depicting the true dimensions and perspective of Australia. It's showing Australia extremely wide and not so tall from north to south. It's completely out of proportion. And I have to be honest, when I first got into Flat Earth and somebody showed me this map and said, this is what the physical Earth looks like, I actually thought they were joking. As I said, I spent 30 years flying around the real Earth. This map is not even close to a physical depiction of the real Earth. And we've just demonstrated with Australia that the true flight plan distances simply cannot work on this AE map. It has Australia far too wide. In fact, in reality, the width of Australia from Brisbane to Perth is less than the distance from Los Angeles to New York. But on this map, it's showing about seven centimeters on my ruler versus about 13 centimeters. So the relative size of Australia compared to the USA is just completely wrong. And this simple demonstration highlights the fact that the AE map is not a physical depiction of the true shape of the earth. It simply doesn't work. And I'm going to highlight some of the other routes in future videos, but we started with Australia because I live in Australia and it's a place that I have flown across numerous times. I can verify those distances in the flight plans are accurate. Those were real flight plans. I've calculated three real flight plans in the space of an hour this evening and all the greatest minds in flat earth cannot produce a single flight plan in 14 months. So to me that really speaks volumes. I mean they are trying to tell us they know the shape of the earth but there is not one flat earther 
that I have encountered in the last 18 months that even has a clue about how to navigate across the real earth. And yet that is what I've been doing accurately and safely for the past 30 odd years. So just to summarize, we have demonstrated with three actual routes within Australia that the AE style map does not produce correct respective distances. It shows Australia as being far too wide and the respective distances between the three routes were incorrect compared to real flight plans and Google Earth and my flight planning app. So we can therefore see that the AE map is not a true depiction of the Earth. The other point is that I produced three real flight plans in the space of an hour. My flight planning challenge to flat earthers has gone unanswered for 14 months. It is my job to fly aeroplanes around the earth. I've been doing that for more than 30 years, safely and accurately. If you're a flat earther and you want to try and sell your flat earth to me on my channel, you need to come and show me how you're going to navigate around your earth. Because I can do it on the globe. If you can't show me an accurate map that works, if you can't show me how to produce an accurate flight plan that will work in a real aeroplane, you're in no position to tell me what shape the earth is. And I'll just finish off again with another plug for Walter's flight planning tool, which he designed for creating flight plans on a flat earth. Now, the point of this app is to demonstrate once again that the flight plans on an AE style map are completely inconsistent with reality. And what I've done there is just put in a flight plan from Sydney to Perth, and it's showing a distance of 4,482 nautical miles. Now, remember that was just around 1,461 nautical miles in reality. And it shows the flight plan route on the flat earth, and it shows the flight plan on a globe earth and this red line is showing where you would go if you followed the flight plan that was produced for the flat earth so as you can see it's just complete nonsense i highly recommend checking out this app it's a brilliant tool for comparing flight plans between different locations on the earth what they look like on a flat earth versus how they work on the globe and as you will see what is produced for the globe matches reality. What is produced for the flat earth is completely inconsistent with reality. So once again, flat earth can't flight plan.